All right, it's time to hunt monsters. They're called kimono here. Whatever you'd say, buddy. No, really, it's an important distinction, an entirely different thing for copyright reasons. Do they threaten the lives of helpless citizens? Well, yes, of course. Then they're monsters. Ugh, just go hunt stuff. Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, Wild Arts has been out for nearly a month now, and no matter your feelings on the game itself, it is the first genuine competitor to the Monster Hunter series in quite a long time. The hunting game genre, as we tend to call it because the genre doesn't really have a solid name yet, has been woefully underutilized since its creation with Monster Hunter itself. This isn't me bashing Monster Hunter, I absolutely love Monster Hunter. It is my favorite series of games to exist. I have an un told number of hours in it, but the fact is that there are just very few things that are like it. There are some that have similar combat, but combat isn't the only thing that makes these games what they are. It isn't what makes it so unique that it defined an entire genre of games that no other game has properly broken into. Of course, we had Dauntless popping up over the last few years, a game clearly heavily inspired by Monster Hunter, but it didn't quite feel the same on an atomic level. It wanted to be in the same genre, and by technicality, it is in the same genre, but the issue is that that game is so clearly trying to become Monster Hunter that it doesn't really have its own unique identity, at least not enough to really push the genre into becoming a proper thing. In comes Wild Hearts. This game released a month ago and it had a ton of performance issues on pretty much every platform it released on and still does, honestly, which is extremely unfortunate because the game behind those issues is genuinely very fun. It is genuinely special and unique and an interesting take on the hunting game genre. Don't get me wrong, it is inspired by Monster Hunter, clearly. Game Games in this genre sort of have to be to an extent, or they just don't fit what the genre is. But Wild Hearts takes purposeful steps to create an experience that is different, that is unique. The carrot curry building being pretty much the main one. This is a staple of every single hunt that you do in Wild Hearts. It is at the heart of every weapon, and it makes a really unique way of thinking about the game in comparison to what you would in Monster Hunter. You don't really have an item pouch so much as you have healing water that you can pick up around the map, and then you have thread. With the thread, you can make traps, you can make bombs, you can make flashes, you can make literal environmental shifting traversal, and this is what makes the game unique enough for me to say that it has jump-started the hunting game genre into being more of an actual thing. That and, you know, the actual weapons within the game are pretty unique in their own way too. This is the biggest genuine competitor to Monster Hunter that I have ever seen. I know there are still people who don't play it simply because they're calling it a Monster Hunter clone, but that is entirely sort of backwards if you ask me. If you love Monster Hunter and you think this game looks a bit too much like Monster Hunter, don't you think that means that the game is maybe worth your attention? I don't think it looks too much like Monster Hunter. Obviously, it is inspired by Monster Hunter, but it's not a ripoff. It is a competitor, and there is a solid importance to that distinction. So at this point, having devoted a couple hundred hours of my life to Wild Hearts over the last month and a bit, experiencing pretty much everything that it currently has to offer as far as in-game hunts and the actual game itself, how does it compare to Monster Hunter, and why does that matter? Well, at its core, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, the hunting of this game game is really fun. The actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is quite enjoyable, and that, more than anything else, defines whether a game like this is successful in what it's set out to do. Everything around it can be just sort of okay, but if a hunting game feels good to hold in your hands while you're hunting, then it's done something incredibly right, something very important incredibly right. Then we have the creatures, the kimono. These are, for the most part, pretty down-to-earth concepts of real-world animals, or in some cases mythological creatures, but heavily infused with nature in some way. Plants water, ice, rock, fire, all of these types of changes. Sometimes it's a bit simple, but sometimes it feels genuinely creative, like Lava Back, to use my favorite kimono as an example here. He's a big lava rock monkey, he uses his body weight for his attacks a lot, he flings volcanic rocks at you, that type of thing is cool, but it's sort of what you would expect based on his design, right? Well, what if I told you he takes advantage of the fact that his body is somewhat made of magma to stretch his arms forward and propel the rock fist as a punch? That's what gets me with the kimono designs in this game. Sometimes things are a little straightforward, but some of these creatures have just a ton of personality in their fights. Things that you wouldn't expect just by looking at them, but you can totally get behind once you piece it together. Whether you like the look of kimono or not, they are well-designed concepts for enemies in a hunting genre game. There are tons of varied shapes, varied visual creatures, varied movesets and ideas behind them. One thing that I feel like I have to keep reminding people as well is Wild Hearts is a totally new game. They aren't working off of 
of previous entities. They aren't rehashing stuff that's already been conceptualized. This is a completely new excursion into this genre. The combat system was built from the ground up. Every single kimono is new. There are 15 full-on unique creatures if you ignore subspecies, but I'd argue that the subspecies in this game are for the most part incredible and entirely worth consideration, in which case there are also seven of those to add on as well. On top of this, there is a sort of rank split in the game where you start to fight the mighty versions of monsters, which is essentially the high rank equivalent for Wild Hearts. And of course, they get a few new moves here as well. Then even past that, in the end game, we have volatile and deeply volatile creatures, and when it comes to deeply volatile kimono, their movesets change quite significantly even further. And while there were only four deeply volatile in the game at the launch, they seem to have plans to add more in free title updates, given that we just got deeply volatile lava back literally today. So, you know, there's that. To compare this in Monster Hunter terms, this is like if Monster Hunter World had 22 monsters and not a single one was returning. Some were subspecies of each other, sure, but not a single returning monster. They had to work from the ground up to create each and every one of these things. They had to create each of these systems, the concepts, all from the bottom. This is to say that if Wild Hearts didn't necessarily impress you, just wait until they get to make their next entry into the series. One made where they have all of these established concepts already decided on, all these assets to reuse in various ways. This is just the beginning for this series. Monster Hunter has been running for nearly 20 years. This is the first go-round for Wild Hearts, and it's staggering how good it is when you consider that. A big consideration with that is the final boss of the game as well. I refuse to spoil it, even now, a month in, but you know how Monster Hunter final bosses are always a big spectacle that steals the show visually? Well, Wild Hearts has one that does just the same, and it feels like nothing Monster Hunter has done before, but it feels like an incredible experience too. A truly unique and satisfying end of story spectacle fight, and that is commendable in its own right. With that then, let's talk about some of the more nitty gritty concepts just a little bit. There aren't a ton of weapon designs in the game. A number of them are reused from early game to later game weapons, which is a bit disappointing for me. And while some of them do look incredible, others are just sort of meh. This is probably a result of the sheer amount of things that had to be done to bring this game to life as the first of the series, but this is still a thing worth mentioning even if I can't understand why. One thing that I'll also put here is that for most weapon types, there's actually the ability to change your damage type. There is pummel, slash, and lunge, which is basically the equivalent of the different damage types in Monster Hunter, but within a weapon, there are certain weapons along the tree that actually have different damage types based on the way that they look, and I've been saying that should be a thing in Monster Hunter for years, so I really love that that's here. As well, there are the armor designs in this game. There is very little variety in the armor designs. They all sort of stick to a specific theme. If you like that theme, then you'll like the armor. If you don't like that theme, then you probably won't really like the armor all that much. It's about that simple. It's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but in comparing this to Monster Hunter, one of my favorite things that Monster Hunter does is a sheer variety of visuals. So many different and unique looking things, so it's just something for everyone. Whereas Wild Hearts, even though it does have the ability to change the look of your armor visually in a layered armor type of way, mostly just sticks to one theme with its armor. Nothing really deviates all that much from it. Then let's talk about the end game a little bit. Wild Hearts end game sort of lost me, honestly, and that's a big distinction between this and Monster Hunter as well. There are volatile and deeply volatile kimono. You need to do volatile kimono, which are essentially a tempered equivalent to get the materials to do your armor cladding, which is layered armor, and also to get the keystones to let you actually do the deeply volatile. A big issue with this though, and the reason that it didn't keep me all that interested, is I'm just not a massive fan of many of the armor sets in the game. It's not even the shape or the theme, but my general aesthetic is very focused around, well, the pink. There is an armor dying system in the game, but even so, not many things can be made properly pink, and I just struggled to find the perfect set of armor pieces to call my look, so this system just sort of lost me after only a few hours. I didn't really feel the need to dig myself into it and create the perfect visual set. Then we have the deeply volatile kimono. These are pretty much the most challenging things in the game. They have buffed health, buffed damage, and notably altered movesets to add some really difficult things to deal with in the fight. These are really fun. They have a one death limit, severely lowered time limit, and they really push you to be as good a hunter as possible if you're going to get them done. They want you to have properly made builds, like pretty much end game builds, and even then some of them can still be a bit of a challenge. These were super enjoyable the first time around without a doubt, and the main reward they theoretically give is stronger talismans than anything else in the game, but in practice I just didn't really find that to be the case, at least not to a notable enough degree to make me want to farm them. So this is where I think the big disconnect wound up being here. If they want me to play their end game systems on repeat for hundreds and hundreds of hours, there needs to be a more feasible reward for doing so. 
I will happily just go out and hunt random kimono because I enjoy hunting them, I enjoy the game, and I enjoy those kimono, but if you specifically want me to interact with the deeply volatile system as a farm of repetitive, never-ending endgame experience, then the reward needs to be a bit more actually tangible, something that I can feel as being worth doing as I'm doing it. One thing that I both liked and struggled with with this game as well was the whole weapon upgrade path thing. One of the more interesting takes that this game has on the genre is the concept of inherited skills on your weapon. The idea that it isn't just the weapon in your hands that matters, but every single step you took along the way to upgrade it to its endpoint, allowing you to pick up varying skills depending on how much time you spend getting to the final weapon. You can just straight up beeline to your end tier weapon, sure, and that will happen much faster, but at the end of the day, that could literally have 40-50% to 50 less damage than if you properly sat down and farmed 50-100 to 100 kimono and snaked your way through the upgrade tree. Of course, this is quite time consuming, but I actually really enjoy that this was a thing. I really genuinely like this concept. It made me care a lot more about my weapon, and it genuinely incentivizes going out to hunt lower tier kimono, even in the late game, just because you need their materials to go through the path that you're aiming for. Overall, I quite like the world of Wild Hearts as well. I think the maps were relatively well designed and fun to explore, especially with all the traversal based karakuri that makes getting from point A to point B easier. I really like the mechanic of choosing where your tents go yourself, essentially deciding where your camps will be for yourself instead of having the map just have them preset. It's neat, and it's definitely a fresh change from what Monster Hunter does with its set locations and paths, even in the open world era. As for the story, I didn't get particularly attached. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't notably good either, just a serviceable vehicle for the game that it was encased within. And that's about it, really. I really, really enjoyed Wild Hearts and my time with it so far, which isn't done. As someone with, at this point, over 10,000 hours across various Monster Hunter games over the last few years, realistically, I can say that Wild Hearts is an extremely successful attempt to break into the genre. It is a genuine competitor. While some people may not like that, it is important to remember that competition is a good thing. The better that Wild Hearts does, the more Monster Hunter feels pressure to step things up even further in their next release. The hunting game genre has been relatively uncontested for pretty much its entire existence, and this is the first actual major competitor to have made a dent in the market. I'm genuinely excited to see what this means for the future of Monster Hunter itself, and I'm also excited to see what happens with the future of Wild Hearts. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye